Today we're gonna do a notebook review. This is the first on a series of reviews featuring local brand notebooks. This video is divided into four parts, so be sure to check the description for timestamps. Allo Notebook was released in February of 2021 by Calligraphy Source. Calligraphy Source is based in the Philippines and they are known for selling stationaries such as pens, markers, and different brands of journals. They created Allo Notebook with a quality that can match well-known brands but at an affordable price for their fellow Filipinos. Allo means wave in English, and their notebooks come in waves. The first wave is to reach for the stars, which includes three dotted notebooks, all having hot stamped foil logo of these cute little dolphins in their front covers. One of the notebooks has black pages while the other two have bright white pages. They also released the second wave of the Smooth Sailing series, which features two notebooks, both with gold stamped logos on the front cover and white dotted pages. In total, they currently have five notebooks released and more to come. I'll link them in the description so you can check out available colors and designs. I already unboxed mine a while ago, so this is a reenacted unboxing. We got like a double box protection for this notebook, but the actual packaging, this recyclable box, has the Allen notebook logo on the cover and some wave pattern designs. Right now, I still have my two Allen notebooks in their respective boxes, so I don't have to think yet what to put in them. When you open the box, the notebook is covered in white paper. I recently got my first Archer and Olive and this is like the same vibe when you open the packaging. It has this belly band inserted with a preview of the specs and their social media handles. The notebook is in the size A5. It's hard bound and the cover is made of premium fabric material. It attracts dust a lot so I'm not sure if this is gonna be an issue in the long run. I've never had notebooks with fabric cover before, so this is new to me. Anyway, it also has an elastic closure with the same color as the cover and a pen loop on the side. I tried putting my go-to Pilot Friction in two colors and I had a hard time, but I don't really use this feature so I don't mind. Opening the notebook to the front page, you'll have a space to write your name on and the brand logo can be seen at the bottom. At the back, we got a spacious pocket made of paper and a ribbon-like material, so I think this won't rip easily. I'm planning to store some stencils and random papers in here. I think this is what case binding is. So the notebook lays flat when opened because of how it's glued together. I noticed that at the top of the pages, there appears to be a dent, but the other notebook doesn't have this so it's probably my fault. I've had this notebook since March and I'm making this video in May so it's been a while. Going back, this notebook has two page markers and we love notebooks with more than one page marker, right? This is what excites me the most, the paper. It has 192 pages of dotted bright white paper, 160 GSM, and according to the description, it can handle all the usual bullet journal supplies. This is a 5mm dot grid in the perfect shade of light gray. The number of squares are 26 by 38 squares per page, but sadly, this notebook doesn't have page numbers. Is it common for notebooks bound in this method to have some pages glued like this? Let me know in the comments below. I was going to cut the glued parts a bit, but I got scared I might ruin the whole notebook so I didn't. 
It was a recurring problem, and if I'm being honest, it bothered me a bit. I'm not yet sure how I'm gonna deal with this, but I'm probably just gonna end up folding one side for it to lay flat. I already did a pen test right after I got the notebook, so I guess this is how some random pens look after around 2 months on the paper. But I figured I could try to use the notebook by making a random spread so that I have like an actual experience using it. Does that make sense? I didn't want it to take a lot of time, so I decided to just letter the brand name I used my I don't want to butcher the pronunciation brush pens, a zebra sarasa vintage in camel yellow, and some microns. I am left handed and I have a very heavy hand, so smearing and smudging are my biggest enemies. Aside from my face or head always showing up in my videos, sorry about that. But fun fact, I don't really need glasses to see. But I've been having headaches this last week, so I'm trying this out. I'm trying this whenever I use my gadgets. It's just an anti-radiation glasses from Metro Sunnies, and I don't even know if it really helps. <laughs> but we try to focus. I usually go back to some strokes because my hands are shaky whenever I try to do something new. The paper did well though. It didn't get dragged by the brush, so that's cool. I use this Zebra Sarasa vintage pens a lot in my collections. I don't really decorate my collections, but I pick a color related to my monthly theme and I use my stencil a lot so I fill in a lot of letters with these pens. I try to make a thick box because I feel like that would look better here, so I went over the same area a lot. Doing this sometimes causes bleeding in my current notebook. So we'll see if it holds up better. Now for the paint test. I want you to keep in mind that I'm not in any way an artist. I just bought this cheap watercolor palette and I use it mainly to draw backgrounds like plain sky backgrounds, stuff like that. We'll try it with less water, a good amount of water, and a lot of water. First, with less water, I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to lines, so I wanted to keep the swatches rectangular, but it's watercolor and I'm not a pro, so we should just move on. Next, we have the one with a good amount of water. It felt like I didn't add enough water, so I kept adding some more. But the page was starting to buckle, so I tried to remove some of the watercolor using a dry brush. A lot happened here, so let's just say this one is when a lot of layering and mistakes occurred on the page. The last one is the one with a lot of water. I wanted this to work because this is mainly how I use my watercolor, so we'll see. I let everything dry for a few hours and now we're ready. Like I said earlier, I already tried different pens a while ago, but I added a Copic marker just in case it can withstand alcohol markers. I got the Tombow ABT here, a Pentel Fuda Touch, this red brush pen, a Sharpie pen with a brush tip, a medium zebra brush pen, a Tombow Fudinoski, a Carrion Brush Marker Pro for paint marker, a Uniposca PC5M in gold, a mild liner, a Sakura Pigmographic, a Copic Multi Liner, STA Metallic Brush Pen, my longest drying gel pen, Uniball Signo DX, a Pilot Petite Fountain Pen. and the Pilot Fude Makase. The other pen test I did where I tried to letter the Allen logo was on the other side so their backs would be between them. 
Ta-da! Only the Copic sketch bled through the paper. I used a light neutral gray in hopes that I don't know if I use a lighter color it'll have better results but of course this is an alcohol marker and the Karin Brush Marker Pro has a little ghosting here but the paper seems to do well on the other pens I tried. Now the left side is what surprised me more. I expected at least ghosting but there's none. Is there? What I can see here are the dents on some parts caused by my heavy hand going through the same parts over and over again. This is awesome. But now, the paint test. Paint's all dried up on top of the paper, even the part that I messed up, so I'm expecting to see good results here. The paper buckled on the second and third swatch, but not that much that it was bothering me. The swatch with a little water did well though. You can see where the swatches are, but I think it's not noticeable if you already have stuff on your spread. So I think we did well here too, given that this is uncoated paper, right? I bought this notebook for 598 pesos and yes, this video is not sponsored. So how do I put this? It's got its flaws, like I got dirt on it already, but I can feel the passion behind it. And I think that's one of the things I love about this. Sorry, this review is a personal opinion and I'm a sentimental person. This made me feel like it was created while really thinking about who will use it. Like every detail from the packaging to the sort of pen-proof thick white pages to the light gray dots. Plus they made it so affordable is something that for me actually adds value to this notebook. I still am bothered by the pages that won't lay flat, but there's no perfect notebook. The page numbers are more important to me though, so I hope they make a series of notebooks with like page numbers. I'ma buy that, definitely. But that's it for now. Thanks for making it this far in the video. I really appreciate it and I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next one.